Hello and welcome everyone to the next episode on SAP Business Technology Platform Training. And in this video series, we are discussing about cloud application programming model. Our today's topic is creating database tables. So let's understand why do we need to use CDS way of creating database table. So CDS stands for Core Data and Services. And this is a way you can define as well as you can create new database artifacts using the CAPM model into the corresponding database. Now, why do we need to use CDS? Why can't I use directly the database commands like create table to create a database table? The reason for that is we want to utilize CAPM functionality to build our application in a database agnostic manner. So let's understand what is what does it mean by database agnostic way of development. So suppose today your company has a MySQL database. And what you want to do is you're writing a, a command to create a database table. So you say create table, table name, and then you will put columns. And then you will put curly braces and then of course all the columns. Now this is the SQL command you would need to pass to MySQL database to create a database table. Now, if you're using a HANA database, then the command slightly changes to say create table. And you say create column table. Because in HANA we have column store. So we have to say create column table. And then we have to say parenthesis. And then we put column names. And of course, at the end we put the primary key. Now, what happens is let's say I'm developing a software application. And this software application today is using my SQL database. And I'm firing from my application a SQL code to generate database table, which means my code is tightly coupled to my SQL. The day I decide to move out of this MySQL and plug my application to my HANA database, what I need to do is I need to go back and change all my SQL commands according to HANA. So that's a bad idea. That's a bad design. You are coupling your application according to database. What CAPM says that you do not define any database SQL command directly. Rather, you define according to me a .cds file for your database table. You will define it with a predefined syntax given by CAPM. And there is also a beautiful graphical modeling tool which you can use to create your table quickly. And then you also follow along a quick standard wherein you can also auto upload the data and you give it to CAPM. And what CAPM does is CAPM will check which is the underlying database. Is it SQL or is it HANA? If it is MySQL, CAPM will generate the necessary SQL statement for you according to MySQL. And if it is HANA, it is going to develop or generate the necessary SQL statement according to HANA. Wow. So now you have done a code which is database agnostic. You don't have to go back and change your code again and again. Tomorrow you switch from HANA to SQLite or Postgre or MongoDB. Perhaps your table will also be created in the corresponding underlying database. Bam, that's a great advantage. So let's go ahead and now see what table do we want to create. So I would like to create a database table for storing my order data. This is my dummy data, which I would like to store in my table. So let me go ahead and now create a new database table using CAPM. So we switch over to Business Application Studio. And in our database folder, we are going to create a new file. So let me create a new file and I will name it as, let's say, orders.cds, or I will say my data model.cds. So one CDS file can perhaps have definition of multiple tables. So we first define a namespace and I'll name it as anubav.db. And then next what I want to add is a orders table. So let me define an entity. So we create a new entity. Entity is nothing but your database table. So let me give this name of the entity as orders. And then we can start adding columns one by one to my entity. So I will add a key and I say, let me go back to my table. We need all these columns and we can add them 
Now, this is a classical way of writing code, but maybe what if you're not liking too much of programming? No problem. You can just save this up first. And what you can see at the bottom, CAPM data model and services. Expand the section. Just go little up and little up. And now you see you've got a namespace in, in the unabout.db. And if you double click on this object, you can right click and say open CDS graphical modeler. And bam, there you go. You can see it launches a beautiful graphical tool where you can start modeling your database table. So my table name is orders. And I can start creating my order table now in a graphical way without writing too much of code. So anybody can create database table now, the graphical model. So let's go ahead and add properties to the table. So I will add a order ID, which is a key, and I will choose it as a number. Say add. The next field which I would like to add in my table is customer name. And this is going to be a string of about 120 characters. Next, I would add contact person name, which is again a string, 180 characters. We don't allow null values. And then we say gross amount, which is a decimal and up to let's say 10 and 2. Click on OK. Next, we have the currency. And I'll say currency code. It's of type character or string. It's a currency code of four characters. Click on Add. And we've got our database table. I just hit this Control S to save. And now switch back to my data model CDS. You will see that the code is automatically generated. Nice. Now you can see system also generated an integer 16 type, which is of type in 16. Yes, this was also created. In the next episode, I will show you creating reusable types and adding those reusable types again to your data set. So that's how we create our database table. The very next step, what we need to do is deploy this and get the table created in the system. So what I have to do is I will deploy this to a SQLite database, which is already added as a dependency. You can see when I set up the new project system automatically added this dependency to my project. So what I just need to do is I need to give a CDS command to deploy this on my system. So let me clear the console and just run the CDS deploy command to run this or deploy this on a SQLite database. So now type command CDS deploy to SQLite. Enter. And now you see my deployment is successful and system has generated an SQLite.db database over here, which means now my table would have got created into my SQLite database. Cool. In the next step, what we will do is we will go ahead and load data and we will also see the reusable type. If you're interested to learn complete cloud application programming model with SAP Cloud Platform, feel free to subscribe our training on anubotrainings.com. With that, thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next episode.